right. We're rolling, Robo. All right. Hey, welcome to, what are we calling this? Eats and Drinks? Yeah, I thought we were going to do an intro. Well, no, you've got to say, you've got to say the name of it, at least. Uh, we're making nachos. I love nachos. Salty, do you like nachos? I love nachos. That's awesome. Onion, garlic, chorizo, uh, cumin, coriander, and paprika, all ground up. Coriander stems, there's no wastage in this, in this house. Coriander stems and roots are really good. Uh, give them a bit of a clean, put them in with your onion, nice and fragrant. Uh, what else we got? Chipotle, I love chipotle and adobo, really good, really earthy and spicy. Fresh tomato, limes, fresh coriander, tin tomato, tin kidney beans, corn chips, sour cream, avocado. That sounds like a lot, is that a lot? You don't really want to cook the chorizo, chorizo, if you, if you will, uh, because it's already kind of cooked, it's cured, um, we're just gonna let that fat ooze out and, and get into the, the taste. Uh, and while that's going on low, we'll cut some onion and some garlic. People always want to like cook onion and garlic really high when they're starting out. Uh, I think it's better to, to cook it low. Uh, I'm just going to turn the trees off and let it melt a little bit. Uh, because it doesn't burn and onion, like you cook onion slowly, uh, it caramelizes and gets delicious. Where's my garlic gone? Uh, here's a fun little thing about garlic. When it's cold, it grows bigger. So when a recipe says garlic cloves, uh, you know, use one garlic clove. Uh, that's, a, that's a chunky clove. So, I don't know, use your judgment. Um, if it says one, use one garlic clove and you've got a tiny clove, then don't, you know, use more than one. If you've got a big chonker, you've got a lot of garlic. Smush it with your knife. Uh, you don't need to really smush it down, just kind of chop it nice and fine. The reason I'm using chorizo uh, is because it's delicious. So coriander stems and ground coriander. So a lot of people don't eat coriander because it tastes soapy. Does it taste soapy to you or it tastes gross to you? It tastes gross, yeah. Uh, I don't think stems have that same effect. I'm not a scientist. Uh, I've turned the chorizo up. It's starting to get some of the fat going out. You kind of want to start the pan off cold and let the chorizo sort of uh, render that fat out. Add a little bit of uh, just sunflower oil. And what's going to happen is the fat that's starting to leach out is going to start getting into that, getting into that oil. And we've got delicious fatty chorizo -y oil as the basis of our dish. How good does that sound? Now we've kind of got most of this fat rendered. Or it's just starting to leach out. We're going to turn it down again and I'm going to add in all this onion. You can see the onions picking up uh, all the... All the chorizo fat, so it's kind of going a little bit, a little bit uh, reddish, brownish, and that's from all that delicious chorizo flavour. And the cool thing about these chunks of chorizo is, when you're eating it, you're getting big chunks of chorizo in your mouth, and that's awesome. Who doesn't want a big chunk of chorizo in their mouth? <laughs> Add in our garlic and celery stems. Uh, celery stems, coriander stems. Don't, yeah, just don't cook everything on high heat. It's such a, a mistake that everyone makes. You're just like, I've got all this heat. I live in. 2019, I can just blast everything with heat. Uh, but this, you know, slow, slow cooking gives you control, and it means you don't have to stress out and panic about getting everything done quickly and letting and things burn. Uh, so yeah, medium high. Just let everything start to get delicious, get yummy, take on all each other's flavour. Paprika, that's a sweet paprika. Uh, dry, ground coriander, ground cumin. I love ground cumin, uh, and we're going to coat the shit out of everything. All of this is just going to take on all that flavour. Uh, and cook the spices. Ground spices, you kind of want to cook them early on just so they cook out and they don't kind of end up in the final dishes grainy and uncooked. You could eat this on toast and it would be awesome. You can make it as spicy or as not spicy as you want. I find I like to use chipotle and adobo because it's got a, a real depth of spice and smokiness, but it's not super spicy. But if you want to add spice later on, you've still got that real rich flavour in there. And then you can, you know, add fresh chili or chili sauce at the end. Uh, so cut this baby up. At this point, because uh, things start sticking to the bottom, is I'll just get a little bit of water and just give it a splash, just to deglaze everything, get all the flavours that anything that is sticking to each other, just to open them up and get them off the bottom of the pan. 
tomatoes. Tin tomatoes are great. Always, if you're buying tin tomatoes, buy like four tins because you've always got tin tomatoes in your cupboard. You've got a basis for soup. Uh, I think these are whole tomatoes. Buy crushed so you don't have to mush them down. I don't know why we've got whole ones, but we do. One thing I always do as well with these kind of dishes, I, I make them liquidier than, than the final result. Um, just because you can kind of let them cook down, let all the flavours kind of enrich, and you can also go away and do other things while you're letting it do it. So, yeah, you add liquid and just let it reduce. Um, and you can also, there's all that flavour in that tin that gets wasted. So if you add some liquid in there, some water in there, and then pop it in, you've cleaned your can and you've got all the flavour out. Now the next thing is kidney beans. And I've, oh no, there we go. Uh, black beans, can, can, cannellini beans. Uh, you can use a mixture. Uh, the thing with this dish as well, this will serve two people. But if you want to serve more people, another tin of tomato and another tin of beans will will bulk it up. Easy. At this point, taste, man, taste everything you cook. Tasting things, like you don't want to get to the end and be like, oh, I didn't add enough salt. I didn't add enough whatever. Uh, so stir everything up and give it a little taste. It's tasting good. We're pretty happy. Uh, the, the kind of the secret that chefs never tell anyone is salt is kind of like the main ingredient in, in so many things or the, the biggest spice in so many things so don't be afraid to make things nice and salty. Uh, so we're going to let this baby reduce down a little bit uh, which is why I kind of like to make it liquidy because you can let it reduce and just do other things. So while it does we're going to do another, another recipe. You're going to put like a graphic Sure. Somewhere, a link to the other recipe. A nacho, beano, thingo, look at this. Whew. All that liquid's cooked down. I'm going to turn it off and have a sneaky taste. Oh, it's so good. There's an ingredient that I've never seen in nachos before that I always use in nachos. Uh, as we talked about before, nachos are all about getting that like, lovely depth of flavour, um, but then finishing off with something nice and fresh. Uh, kaffir lime leaves are awesome. They're like lime supercharged. Uh, so I always finish off my my nachos with, with kaffir lime. Uh, you can put it in sort of early on and then just take it out at the end. Don't be too precious about like it's kind of fun getting a big chunk of it in there. Uh, nice and sort of vegetable and chlorophyll-y. I think that's the right word. So I'll add that baby in. And also lime zest, as we said like before, like with the coriander roots and the coriander uh, stems, if you're using these ingredients, they've got so much flavour that we normally just throw away. I've got totopos. Apparently these are, I don't know much about um, how they're made. I think they have more salt than a regular tortilla corn chip. Uh, I think these are kind of the original corn chips and then people have kind of moved away for some reason. La Tortilleria, La Tortilleria brand, apologies for my pronunciation. Uh, buy good corn chips. If you buy shit corn chips, then you're going to end up with like salty and kind of gross and they'll go soggy. These don't go soggy at all. Um, and they're a really good base for, for a nacho. Just get a shot of them pouring out of the bag. Did that look good? Oh. <laughs> uh, make a little buddy, make a little hole. The good thing about cooking nachos as well is you can eat corn chips while you do it. You excited for these nachos, Salty? Uh, try to get them all in the middle. Uh, one also pro tip about this, as I said, I could cook these like on a Friday or a weekend. You can get all this mixture prepared hours in advance and then just bring it back up to heat when you're ready to eat. So if you're watching a sporting match, the big, the big game, Get them ready before the game, then at half time warm them up and get them going and then for the second half you've got yourself a party. Alright, let's get a fresh chilli going on. As I said the heat wasn't quite where we want it to be. Um, I'm going to take the seeds out. If you leave the seeds in it's still cool. Um, but we've got hot sauce to put on top of this if we need it. So 
Uh, if you're sensitive to chili, use gloves. I'm okay with it. I wear contact lenses and get chili in my eye all the time when I'm taking my contacts out and I've been cutting chili. It's fine, you get over it. Fresh tomato, we've got tin tomato, but fresh tomato is awesome as well. Um, as I said, it's just that kind of layering of, of cooked rich flavors and fresh, fresh acidic flavors. Cheese. Uh, this is just tasty cheese. I think it's like Australian tasty. Uh, if I had mozzarella, I'd use that, but I forgot to buy it. Um, the mixture of like mozzarella and cheddar cheese is awesome. Mozzarella gives it stretch and the cheddar gives it taste. Um, but for today, we're just doing tasty. Uh, you don't need heaps of cheese, by the way. There's kind of a, I don't know, a temptation to just go crazy with it. But if you go crazy with it, it doesn't all melt. Some of it burns. Uh, the final thing, which I sometimes do, and I figure I should do it today, uh, is just adding paprika on top. Paprika, when it's toasted on cheese, gets all like, oh, I don't know, I don't know what, how to describe it, but it just gets delicious. Yeah, we're going to put that under the grill, and uh, we'll be back with the finished product. Yeah, just put it in onto a fan grill, super hot. Uh, and yeah, keep an eye on it so the cheese doesn't burn. Are you ready? Uh, now, I know Salty you won't like coriander, so this will be mine. Lime juice on top. Still not done. You can see the... Um, you can't eat more because I covered it up. But you can see the paprika has gone all nice and toasty on that cheese. All the cheese has gone all melty. And we've got nachos. Should I do like a porn shot? No, it's a disaster. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, really good. Is that it? Are we done? I think that's it. I want to eat. Can you put our social stuff? Yeah. Thanks everyone. Point to where you want it to be. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know where I'm in frame. Okay, that'll be. There. Yep. Get us on socials.